Welcome back to the channel and this series in which you get to meet our fantastic faculty. Today, I'd like to introduce you to assistant professor with our exercise science department, Dr. David Boffey. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, you and I are both pretty new to the program. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you're from. Um, give us some background information on who Dr. Boffey is. Sure. Um, well, I was born in Oakland, California, across the bay from San Francisco. And uh, basically, I was born and raised in the East Bay and the North Bay, so around that whole part of California. I've been in Florida the last four years at UCF. Okay. my PhD yeah and then I'm just wrapping up my first semester at Pitt State awesome awesome and your academic journey is a really unique one that I think and I hope that a lot of people out there will relate to um, what'd you get your bachelor's in uh, music and literature from UC Santa Cruz yeah and and walk us through that progression of, of your love for music and and what led you to um, you know pursuing a PhD in exercise physiology from UCF where's yeah. wa walk us through that journey um, so basically, at that point, uh, my parents just encouraged me to pursue what I was interested in, which was music. Through and through, I was playing in a band. All my friends, we were kind of all in the same band, and that was my, my high school experience. It was largely centered around music. So as soon as I got to about senior year of school, some time opened up, and I took a yoga, weightlifting, or weight training class, and a swimming class, all in the same semester. I think it was my first semester of senior year. And I fell back in love with sports, basically, mm -hmm. which was actually what I did for most of my childhood. Yeah. A little bit of everything in terms of sports. So what that led to is a bunch of random jobs after school. Um, I didn't pursue music as a career. I kept it as a hobby, okay. which I'm grateful for. Yeah. And I still have that as one of my main hobbies. And essentially, I talked to actually the drummer of my band from high school, <laughs> still kind of around my hometown. And he was getting into personal training. I had no idea what it was. I asked him about it and went over to his house and he had a bunch of books on personal training. Yeah. Like Human Kinetics is our biggest publisher and um, he had a bunch of NASM materials and pretty much from that point, I grabbed one of his books, borrowed it, and then I just got hooked on that. So that's pretty much my experience. Became a personal trainer within about six months, yeah. got certified, which is um, not too difficult of a process. Mm -hmm. Just have to invest some money and some time to get started. And as soon as I did that, I knew that somewhere within the field of, let's just call it exercise or kinesiology, yeah. I, would be, I would be able to have a career. Yeah. So, um, so what, what inspired you to continue your, your education and, and get your PhD? What, what took you to UCF? Yeah, so uh, getting the master's was a decision based on um, basically my grandma, uh -huh. allowing me to be able to do that financially. Yeah, That's wow. not easy. Um, so that led me to get the master's. The reason I got the master's was actually partly just to help me as a personal trainer because mm -hmm. I realized that being young, like 23, 24 years old, yeah. working with clients in their 40s, 50s, 60s, that's who most personal training clients are, Right. I realized if I told them I'm getting a master's right now and I'm focused on the education and the science of it, it builds a lot of credibility very mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. And it comes from a good place because I was interested in the science. Right. So the reason why I went so hard and went to a research school for my PhD at UCF was to see if research was really what my passion was or if I just wanted to kind of try it out. Yeah. So ultimately the reason why I'm at Pitt State is that I realized that the educational piece of it is more, it's just kind of more who I am than the research yeah. piece of it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, you're the first from our exercise science program that we've talked to. Can you tell us a little bit about the program in general? What are its strengths? What are uh, kind of the research emphasis areas that uh, yourself and Dr. Carper and Dr. Berry um, look into um, and, and kind of cover the program in general for us, if you don't mind? Sure. Yeah. Um, so we're actually in the process of retooling it for this fall, okay. 2022. Yeah which will be, there's already a, basically a pre-professional or clinical track, mm -hmm. which is a lot of classes that lead people to go into uh, physical therapy school, occupational therapy, athletic training, chiropractor, right? those schools. And then what we're retooling is the other half of the program, which we're gonna call the human performance strength and conditioning track. Um, and this is your wheelhouse more so, right? Yeah, so this is what I was, was hired on to do and this is my experience. Okay. Um, I'm not, I have no, no experience or education in the physical therapy side of things. Right. So much less on the injury and the clinical and 
the cardiac and all the different, much less on the actual physiology in right. essence. Yeah. Um, and more on the application of working with people in a gym or a strength conditioning setting. Okay. Okay. So that's the two kind of heads of the whole exercise science program and the field in general mm -hmm. is whether you're working in education kind of on a one-to-one -one level or with a group of athletes with actual exercise or whether you're in more of a clinical setting and more of a medical, like an allied health field. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and then you asked about research. Yeah. So we have relationships with the ROTC. Okay. Uh, the Pitt State ROTC, which is right down the hall from us. We're working on building a relationship with athletics. Mm -hmm. Um, which is great as far as internships, right? We have students who are into strength and conditioning. They can do an internship here yep. rather than have to go to their hometown or wherever it might be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so those are our, those are two of our main partnerships we have going. Um, we also have master students that conduct research. Yeah. Um, we just had a student here, Hallie, mm -hmm. who was very successful in working with uh, middle-aged people in the area. So we work with the community as well. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. What about the classes that you teach specifically? What what classes are you teaching now? Um, and what classes, what are some of the other classes that you taught last fall? Yeah, uh, I teach kinesiology in person, mm -hmm. which is a little bit of anatomy and biomechanics kind of mixed together. And then uh, the main class I teach online, the grad classes are strength and conditioning and biomechanics. In person, we hope to launch um, a full-time undergraduate strength and conditioning class which will be great because we have the lab space to do that now. Yeah. And have actually most of that class be in our weight room setting that we have here in our lab. Awesome. Um, and then similar to that, we're launching just this semester, we started a personal training class, mm -hmm. which we're gonna brand as a fitness professional class to kind of open it up to uh, people who wanna work in corporate or community wellness. Right. And as far as that, that will also be in our new lab space. Awesome. So we're looking for awesome. more face-to-face -face classes as far as performance and training yeah. in the future. Yeah, awesome. And and that's that's something you see the, the the fitness and health and wellness industry moving towards more generally are, are you know, we need more personal trainers, more group fitness instructors, more um, corporate wellness professionals, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. And uh, the biggest overall thing that's driving that is student interest in strength and conditioning as well. What's the origin of all of that? Um, just across across society right now? Mm -hmm. um, well, something that's happened is certification has become more of a, a mandate yeah. rather than just a bonus. So, like the NCAA mandated that uh, five or six years ago that all D1 coaches have to be certified as mm -hmm. a strength coach. Okay. There's only a couple organizations that actually have, that actually certify strength coaches. Gotcha. There's two, two major ones. So, essentially, that's part of what it is. And it's also just general interest in performance um, and in sports in general. Yeah, I think we're, seems like we're becoming a much more uh, health conscious society. Of course, I think the last two years are, are gonna send us towards that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's good that you're seeing those trends. It's good that y'all have the space and the facilities to, to be able to accommodate that. It's really cool. Um, how would you describe your teaching style though? We've got, we've got future students of yours out there they want to know what they're going to get into whenever they sign up for a class with Dr. Boffy. So what's sure. it like? Um, well, I'm a pretty straightforward teacher overall. Um, I like to have students, there's a little bit of talking and lecturing, but for the most part, I like to have it be hands-on. Yeah. So students will present in all my classes. Um, I try to teach communication skills and presentation or teaching skills, whatever you want to call it, or talking Absolutely. skills Yep. Um, in my classes. But also, I try to, in this personal training and the in-person strength and conditioning class, have a lot of actual exercise instruction. Okay. Which is not a classic academic subject by any means. Right. But that's what these people will actually be doing in their internships and in their entry level and then hopefully, you know, advanced positions in their career. It's all about communication and working as part of a team. So if I can kind of teach some of those skills within a classroom setting then that's yeah what I try to do Te teach teach them those skills along the way as they as they progress with everything else they're learning from your program with kinesiology classes ex mm -hmm. so on and so forth uh, so what is the biggest thing you hope students get out of your classes in general if they could take one skill away from your classes or or, or one lesson away from your classes what would that be it would probably be that 
knowing the science is the foundation to being successful at any of these jobs or being successful in, in our program Yeah, and this emphasis area, but also it's how you apply it and how you communicate it to people. So that I, well, that I would say would be what I would want to be the biggest takeaway awesome. is to make sure that people can communicate their ideas efficiently and effectively rather than being the classic sort of you learned everything in a textbook right. you don't really know how to communicate with people. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So wrapping up a little bit, mm -hmm. what do you do outside of this? What do you do outside of the SRC? Tell us, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll talk about this, but uh, what, about, what about your music background? We want to hear more about that. <laughs> um, so I still play music. I still uh, write and play music with, with some of the guys from, from high school. Yeah. Uh, even 20, 25 years later, yeah. whatever it is, right, at this point. So I still do that, but ultimately having, I got a seven-year-old son, Matthew, wife, Elizabeth, and we got a six-month-old golden retriever. Uh, still a puppy, but it's like 50 pounds by now. Um, so that takes, that's most of my... Uh, my hobby time is dedicated to that. What what's your what genre of music did you play mm. growing up, and, and what do you still play now? Yeah, so what actually got me into music school was basically at my audition. I had no, you know, because you have to audition for lessons as part yep. of that. There's a performance element to it. I basically played a bunch of rock and metal stuff on a classical guitar that the teacher handed me because I didn't have any any background in classical music. Yeah. But what I realized was there's a lot of people who are into rock and metal music that do like classical music. There's not a true crossover, but I ended up sort of getting into classical music through through the academic mm -hmm. side of it. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a mix of both. Yeah. Yeah. And and do you draw any parallels, not to get too philosophical here, but do you draw any parallels between music and, and what you teach on a day-to-day -day basis with your students? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I would say there's two that would apply to any field is that there's an art of this stuff and then there's a science, okay. right? Just like yeah. coaching and communication. Absolutely. There's the science of it. Like I said earlier, that's the foundation. And then there's the art of it, which is how do you communicate with different people, different contexts, different times. So the same thing with music. There's an art and a science. I was better at the science of it. So I could analyze music a lot better than perform it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have that, that skill. I never yeah. really developed it as far as performance. Um, the other thing, the main thing that I learned from studying music is when you learn a piece, you have to, you don't try to play it all the way through. Once you mess up, you go back to where you messed up and then repeat that section. You may repeat the same section, like a bar of music, let's say, mm -hmm. like just something that only lasts two and a half seconds. You might repeat it 50 to 100 times, and then you go back through and you play that through smoothly, and then you move forward. So that's a lesson I learned in music school that I'm very grateful for because that's something, I don't use that analogy with students, right? but that's the learning process essentially. Absolutely. You have Absolutely. to work on the things you're not good at and then everything gets better. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. wow, that's, that's really cool. Um, so, and if they're not sold already, why should students consider the exercise science program here at Pitt State? What makes us unique? I would say our emphasis on hands-on skills and application. So there's as much time in the lab as there is in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, we have small class sizes, somewhere between you know, a handful up to 20 students. And a lot of our lab classes are more like a dozen. So we just newly redesigned our strength and conditioning, or our, we're calling it our human performance lab now. Mm -hmm. We have some sports science technology in there which is great for students to use and, and pretty easy to learn too. Can you give nice. us an example of what you mean by sports science technology? Yeah, so we use a Tendo device for velocity-based training. Okay. Um, we're doing some research on that with the ROTC right now. That's my main area of, of research. Yeah. Um, and along with the Tendo, we have a jump mat, which is a standard piece of technology just for measuring jump height. Okay. And then we do some video analysis too. There's free software that we use that, that every student can download in our biomechanics classes, mm -hmm. and then they can analyze all types of exercise and sport movements. Very cool, very cool. So where can we reach you if we want to find out more about the exercise science program and your classes in particular? Yeah, you can email me, that's the best way, okay. at aboffey, A-B-O-F-F-E-Y, at pittstate.edu. Awesome. And I'll respond. And uh, if you have any questions about the classes or the curriculum or 
sort of what careers it leads to. That's mostly a question that parents have. Absolutely, yeah. Um, human performance is specific, but it's also kind of vague. Yeah. So I have the answers to all those sorts of questions. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for taking the time to join us today. As a ple Thank you. pleasure, as always, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thanks. Thank you.